Hey guys, I'm Kaya, and when it comes to superhero fashion, no one touches the debonair destruction of the invincible Iron Man. You've been called the Da Vinci of our time. What do you say to that? Absolutely ridiculous, I don't paint. Between the comics, cartoons, and movies, there are well over a hundred variants of Tony Stark's trademark suit. That's way too much ground to cover in a 10 minute video. So on this episode of Yellow Spandex, we're sticking to the 48 armors depicted in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is how you've been managing your downtime, huh? Everybody needs a hobby. Let's see how the Golden Avenger evolved over Marvel's decade of on-screen dominance and see how Iron Man's armor made a mark on the MCU. In the comics, Iron Man's suit was always made of metal, but it was depicted as clinging to his muscles like skin-tight spandex. At one point, his helmet like even had a nose for some reason, I don't know, whatever. As the medium evolved, artists incorporated a more high-tech aesthetic, but bringing Shellhead to the silver screen required a whole new level of realism. Even with Professor Yinsen's help, the Mark I armor isn't much to look at. It's a bulky gray mess of wires and welding, just like its comic book counterpart. With its limited arsenal of flamethrowers and a single missile, it still weighs over 1,500 pounds fully loaded. But also give them credit, they made it like a fucking cave. With a box of scraps! I can't even fix my computer. <laughs> <laughs> it's great for deflecting small arms fire and it can rocket jump just fine, even if it can't like stick a landing. <laughs> Still, he lived to build another day, can't really say the same for Professor Yinsen. Don't waste it. Don't waste your life. <laughs> and back in his high tech lab with his expert assistant, he created the chromed out Mark II. It flew like a dream thanks to Stark's patented repulsor technology, but it had an icing problem at high altitudes. Icing problem. Obadiah Stane couldn't work out the kinks, but Stark solved the problem by switching the Mark III to a titanium gold alloy, accented with a little bit of hot rod red. Throw a little hot rod red in there. Yes, that should help you keep a low profile. Based on Addy Granov's 2005 extremist armor, the Mark III was the Iron Man of our dreams, and it served as a blueprint for everything that came next, starting with the sequel, Iron Man 2. The Mark IV armor is more or less the same as its predecessor, which is probably why Tony feels comfortable enough to dance around wasted in it. The Mark VI is pretty similar too, just with a diamond-shaped arc reactor to house Stark's new element. Congratulations. Iron Man 2's real innovation is the Mark V emergency suit, aka the football, named after the briefcase that holds nuclear launch codes in real life. The Mark V is an homage to the comics where Tony's standard costume was small enough to carry in the suitcase. But in the MCU at least, being compact comes at a cost. The emergency suit is significantly weaker than its full-size counterpart, with barely enough power to shut down Mickey Rourke. Over the next few films, Stark experimented with quick deployment methods that didn't sacrifice stopping power, starting with the Avengers. Avengers, assemble. The Mark VII was a big change for Tony's design philosophy. Instead of cramming a shrimpy suit into a briefcase and chaining it to Happy Hogan's wrist, he found a way to bring the armor to him. It was stored in a pod that tracked Tony via two special bracelets, and once they were scanned, the suit wrapped itself around him like a comfy red blanket. It was still in a prototype phase during the Shatari invasion, but Tony put it to the ultimate stress test and it passed with flying colors. Literally, he was even able to survive like the vacuum of space. The Mark VII was a major step up and just like the classic Mark III, it became a base that Tony built on for future iterations, like the many, many armors we're introduced to in Iron Man 3. Tony has a unique method of dealing with his PTSD from the alien attack. Sir, may I remind you that you've been awake for nearly 72 hours? Focus up, ladies. Good evening, and welcome to the birthing suite. Instead of going to therapy or just getting an adorable little service dog, he locks himself in his lab, pumps out dozens of new armors, then pretty much does nothing with them. That's stupid, isn't it? So stupid. At least until the Mandarin tries to kill the president. Then he activates the house party protocol and summons the Iron Legion to his aid. What are you waiting for? It's Christmas. Take him to church. 
Now, there are over 30 armors in this scene. It's dark as hell, and most of them are only on screen for like a frame or two, but there are definitely some standouts, like the Mark 33 based on the Silver Centurion from the comics, Mark 40, the shotgun armor, Mark 17 and 35, or as Tony calls them, Heartbreaker and Red Snapper, and of course, Mark 38, AKA Igor. Tony's main suit throughout the film is the Mark 42, a glitzy gold number that's the apple of its daddy's eye. The prodigal son returns. Ultron is jelly. Every single piece is fully capable of flight, and thanks to chips implanted in his arms, Tony can summon them from anywhere in the world, at least in theory. Here it comes. Three, four. Shut up. Five, four, three. Told you. Sadly, 42 doesn't survive past the prototype phase. It self-destructs around Aldra Killian, and the rest of the Iron Legion gets wiped out by the Clean Slate Protocol. Tony has finally realized he's more than just a man in a can and destroys billions of dollars worth of tech with a single sentence. It's screwed, it's Christmas. So that's it, the end of Iron Man, right? Bring on Riri. Well, not so fast, true believers, because Tony was back on his bullshit by the time Age of Ultron rolled around. The Mark 43 is basically a perfected version of its predecessor with a more traditional candy apple color scheme. Nothing to write home about, but the suit's got a secret. For threats too big and green to tackle with typical armor, Tony can call Veronica, an orbiting satellite that upgrades his outfit to the Mark 44, better known as the Hulkbuster. The only armor tough enough to KO the Green Goliath. I'm sorry. Well, Tony still had to like drop a skyscraper on him at first, but it's still some serious hardcore hardware. I don't know why he even bothered like switching to the Mark 45, although his operating system drive is gaining sentience and a brand new body might have something to do with it. And I was like, yeah, Windows 95 is like, I'm out of here. I'm out of here, bye. Yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm, I'm going to Amsterdam and just kind of explore myself. I'm trying to discover myself, Tony, leave me alone, dad. <laughs> With his girl Friday installed in the firmware, Good evening, boss. Tony's new armor helps stop Ultron and save Sokovia, but battling his best friend required another upgrade for Civil War. During his clash with Cap, Tony debuted the Mark 46 based on his Bleeding Edge comic costume. This baby's got backup arc reactors, a state-of-the-art fire extinguishing system, and a fully retractable helmet, which means Robert Downey Jr. can wear even less of his costume on set. But for all its bells and whistles, the tag team of Cap and Bucky still made Tony tap out. There's only one more stop and suit on the road to Infinity War, Tony's silver armor in Spider-Man Homecoming. The color scheme is a tribute to Tony's ultimate incarnation, but it stops short of the mecha-inspired design. It's pretty much a repainted version of 46, which makes sense. I mean, this was Spidey's show, and Tony wasn't trying to steal the spotlight with some flashy new armor. I mean, hell, he's barely inside of it for most of the movie. It's never too early to start thinking about college. I got some pull at MIT. And call. I, I don't need to go to college. Mr. Stark, Stark is no longer connected. That's not going to be the case this summer, where Tony takes center stage in the fight against Thanos in Infinity War. Tony truly topped himself for the conflict that's haunted him for the last six years. For one thing, there's a brand new Hulkbuster to combat the cosmic menace, but the real star of the show is the Mark 48. Based on Wakanda nanotechnology, 48 can shift and reconfigure itself for whatever the wearer needs, from a set of repulsor wings to a big ass rocket booster and even like a Mega Man style arm cannon. It's the most advanced armor we've seen yet, and if Thanos gets his way, it might be Tony's funeral suit, too. I hope they remember you. Still, even if this is Tony's swan song, there are plenty of new heroes to step in and fill his rocket-powered shoes. Because if the MCU has taught us anything, it's that clothes don't make the Iron Man. Big man in a suit of armor. Take that off, what are you? Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. Hey guys, thanks for watching. This is Charlie. Both Chi and you guys have been requesting Iron Man on the yellow spandex for a while, and we are happy to deliver. We'll probably do a video about his comic book armors one day, but in the meantime, let me know what costumes you want us to cover. And as always, please subscribe to Now This Nerd.